A Yorkshire Tragedy Not So New as Lamentable and True, 1619, by Thomas Middleton. This recording is based on the text of the second quarto, which was attributed to William Shakespeare on its title page. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Speakers in the Play the part of narrator was read into the public domain by Michaela Cook. The part of Rafe was read into the public domain by Jen Dempsey. The part of Oliver was read into the public domain by Caitlin Kirk. The part of Sam was read into the public domain by Samantha Brescia. The part of wife was read in the public domain by Stephanie Cunha. The part of husband was read into the public domain by King and Dee. The part of gentleman one was read into the public domain by Melanie Lavoie. The part of Gentleman 2 was read into the public domain by Eric Isaacson. The part of Gentleman 3 was read in the public domain by Megan Gregoire. The role of servant was read into the public domain by Emily Hero. The part of Master of the College was read into the public domain by Kelsey Wilbur. The part of Son was read into the public domain by Emma Cornella. The part of Lusty Servant was read into the public domain by Nicole Colleton. The part of the Maid was read into the public domain by Sherry Souza. The part of night was read into the public domain by Melissa Jordan. A Yorkshire Tragedy, Not So New as Lamentable and True, written by W. Shakespeare, printed for T.P. 1619. All's one or one of four plays in one called A Yorkshire Tragedy, as it was played by the King's Majesty's players. Enter Oliver and Rafe, two serving men. Sirrah, Rafe, my young mistress is in such a pitiful, passionate humor for the long absence of her love. Why, can you blame her? Why, apples hanging longer on the tree than when they are ripe make so many fallings bees, eh? <laughs> Mad wenches because they are not gathered in time are fain to drop of themselves, and then tis common, you know, for every man to take them up. Mass thou sayest true, tis common indeed. But Sirrah, is neither our young master returned, nor our fellow Sam come from London? Neither of either, as the Puritan bod says. Slid I hear Sam. Sam's come. Here, Terry. Come of faith. Now my nose itches for news. And so doth my elbow. Sam calls within. Where are you there? Boy, look at you walk my horse with discretion. I have rid him simply. I warrant his skin sticks to his back with very heat. If he should catch cold and get the cough of the lungs, I were well served, were I not. What, Rafe and Oliver? Honest fellow Sam, welcome ye fate. What tricks hast thou brought from London? Furnished with things from London. You see, I am hanged after the truest fashion. Three hands and two glasses bobbing upon them. Two rabato wires upon my breast. A cap's case by my side. A brush at my back. An almanac in my pocket. And three ballots in my codpiece. Nay, I am the true picture of a common serving man. I'll swear, thou art. Thou mayest set up when thou wilt. There is many a one begins with less I can tell thee. That proves a rich man ere he dies. But what's the news from London, Sam? Aye, that's well said. What is the news from London, sirrah? My young mistress keeps such a pooling for her love. Why, the more fool she. Aye, the more ye hammer she. Why, Sam, why? Why, he is married to another long ago. <laughs> Yea, be yes. yes. Why, did not you know that till now? Why, he's married, beats his wife, and has two or three children by her. For you must know that any woman bears the more when she is beaten. Ay, that's true, for she bears the blows. Sirrah, Sam, I would not for two years' wages my young mistress knew so much. She run upon the left hand of her wit, and ne'er be her own woman again. And I think she was blessed in her cradle, that he never came in her bed. Why, he has consumed all, pawned his lands, and made his university brother stand in wax for him. There's a fine phrase for a scribner. <laughs> he owes more than his skin is worth. Is it possible? Nay, I'll tell you moreover. He calls his wife whore, as familiar as one would call Moll and Doll, and his children bastards, as naturally as can be. But but what have we here? I thought twas something that pulled down my breeches. I quite forgot my two pudding sticks. He's came from London. Now anything is good here that comes from London. I far fetch, you know. But speak in your conscience, e faith. Not we as good pudding sticks in the country as need to be put in the fire. A mind of a thing is all, as thou saidst even now, far fetches the best things for the ladies. Ay, and for waiting gentlewoman, too. But, Rafe, is our beer sour this thunder? No, no, it holds countenance yet. Why, then, follow me. I'll teach you the finest humor to be drunken. I learned it at London last week. Faith, let's hear it. Let's hear it. The bravest humor, to do a man good to be drunk in it, 
They call it knighting in London when they drink upon their knees. Great, that's excellent. Come follow me, I'll give you all the degrees of it in order. Exeunt. Enter wife. What will become of us? All will away. My husband never ceases in expense, both to consume his credit and his house, and to set down by heaven's just decree that riot's child must needs be beggary. Are these the virtues that this youth did promise? Dice and voluptuous meetings, midnight revels, taking his bed with surfeits, ill beseeming the ancient honor of his house and name, and this not all, but that which kills me most. When he recounts his losses and false fortunes, the weakness of his state so much dejected, not as a man repentant, but half mad, his fortunes cannot answer his expense. He sits and sullenly locks up his arms, forgetting heaven, looks downward, which makes him appear so dreadful that he frights my heart walks heavily as if his soul were earth, not penitent for those his sins are past, but vexed, his money cannot make them last, a fearful melancholy ungodly sorrow. Oh, yonder he comes, now in despite of ills. I'll speak to him, and I'll hear him speak, and do my best to drive it from his heart. Enter husband. Talks of the last throw, it made five hundred angels vanish from my sight. I'm damned, I'm damned. And the angels have forsook me. Nay, tis certainly true. For he that has no coin is damned in this world. He's gone, he's gone. Dear husband. Oh, most punishment of all, I have a wife. I do entreat you as you love your soul. Tell me the cause of this your discontent. A vengeance, strip thee naked. Thou art cause. Effect, quality, property, thou, thou, thou. Exit. Bad, turn to worse, both beggary of the soul as of the body, and so much unlike himself at first, as if some vexed spirit had got his form upon him. Enter husband again. He comes again. He says I am the cause. I never yet spoke less than words of duty and of love. If marriage be honorable, then cuckolds are honorable, for they cannot be made without marriage. Fool, what meant I to marry? To get beggars? Now, must my eldest son be a knave or nothing? He cannot live upon the fool, for he will have no land to maintain him. That mortgage sits like a snaffle upon mine inheritance and makes me chaw upon iron. My second son must be a promoter and my third a thief or an underputter, a slave pander. Oh, beggary, beggary. To what base uses dost thou put a man? I think the devil scorns to be a bod. He bears himself more proudly, has more care on his credit. Base, slavish, abject, filthy poverty. Good sir, by all our vows I do beseech you, show me the true cause of your discontent. Money, 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 and thou must supply me. Alas, I am the least cause of your discontent. Yet what is mine, either in rings or jewels, used to your own desire? But I beseech you, as you are a gentleman by many bloods, though I myself be out of your respect. Think on the state of these three lovely boys you have been father to. Puh! Bastards, 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 begotten tricks, begotten tricks. Heaven knows how those words wrong me, but I'll endure these griefs among a thousand more. O oh, call to mind your lands already mortgaged, yourself wound into debts, your hopeful brother at the university in bonds for you, like to be seized upon and- Ha! Done thou, harlot! Whom though for fashion I married, I never could abide. Thinkest thou thy words shall kill my pleasures? Fall off to thy friends. Thou and thy bastards beg. I will not bait a wit in humor. Midnight still I love you, and revel in your company. Curbed in, shall it be said, in all societies, that I broke custom, that I flagged in money? No. Those thy jewels I will play as freely as when my state was fullest. Be it so. Nay, I protest, and take that for an earnest. <gasps> he spurns her. I will forever hold thee in contempt, and never touch the sheets that cover thee, but be divorced in bed till thou consent. Thy dowry shall be sold to give new life unto those pleasures which I most affect. Sir, do but turn a gentle eye on me, and what the law shall give me leave to do, you shall command. Look it be done. Shall I want dust? And like a slave, wear nothing in my pockets. 
holds his hands in his pockets. But my hands to fill them up with nails? Oh, much against my blood, let it be done. I was never made to be a looker-on, a bod to dice. I'll shake the drabs myself and make them yield. I say, look it be done. I take my leave. It shall. Exit. Speedily, speedily. I hate the very hour I chose a wife. A trouble, trouble. Three children like three evils hang upon me. Five, five, five. Strumpet and bastards. Strumpet and bastards. Enter three gentlemen, hearing him. Still do these loathsome thoughts jar on your tongue, yourself to stain the honor of your wife. Nobly descended, those whom men call mad, endanger others, but he's more than mad, that wounds himself, whose own words do proclaim it is not fit, I pray forsake it. Good sir, let modesty reprove you. Let honest kindness sway so much with you. God then, I thank you, sir. How do you do? Adieu. I'm glad to see you. Farewell instructions, admonitions. Exuant gentlemen, enter a servant. How now, sirrah, what would you? Only to certify you, sir, that my mistress was met by the way, by them who were sent for her up to London by her honorable uncle, your worship's late guardian. So, sir, then she is gone, and so may you be. But let her look, that the thing be done she wots of, or hell will stand more pleasant than her house at home. Exit servant. Enter a gentleman. Well or ill met, I care not. No, nor I. I am come with confidence to chide you. Who? Me? Chide me? Do it finely, then. Let it not move me, for if thou chidest me angry, I shall strike. Strike thine own follies, for it is they deserve to be well beaten. We are now in private. There is none but thou and I. Thou art fond and peevish, an unclean rioter. Thy lands and credit lie now both sick of a consumption. I am sorry for thee, that man spends with shame, that with his riches doth consume his name, and such art thou. Ah, peace. No, thou shalt hear me further. Thy fathers and forefathers were the honors which were our country's monuments, our grace, follies, and they begin now to deface. The springtime of thy youth did fairly promise such a more fruitful summer to thy friends. It scarce could enter into men's beliefs. Such dearth should hang on thee. We that see it are sorry to believe it. In thy change, this voice into all places will be hurled. Thou and the devils have deceived the world. I'll not endure thee. But of all the worst, thy virtuous wife, right honorably allied, thou hast proclaimed a strumpet. Nay, that I know thee. Thou art her champion, thou, her private friend, the party you wot on. Oh, ignoble thought, I am past my patient blood. Shall I stand idle and see my, my reputation touched to death? This has galled you, has it? No, monster. I prove my thoughts to only ten virtuous love. Love of her virtues, there it goes. Face, spirit, to lay thy hate upon the fruitful honor of thine own bed. They fight, and the husband is hurt. Oh! Wilt thou yield it yet? Sir, sir, I have not done with you. I hope nor ne'er shall do. Fight again. Have you got tricks? Are you in cunning with me? No, plain and right. He needs no cunning that for truth doth fight. Husband falls down. Hard fortune. Am I leveled with the ground? Now, sir, you lie at mercy. Aye, you slave. Alas, that hate should bring us to our grave. You see my sword's not thirsty for your life. I am sorrier for your wound than yourself. You are a virtuous house. Show virtuous deeds. Tis not your honor, tis your folly bleeds. Much good has been expected in your life. Cancel not all men's hopes. You have a wife, kind and obedient. Keep not wrongful shame on her in your posterity. Let only sin be sore, and by this fall rise never to fall more. And so I leave you. Exit. Has the dog left me then? After his tooth hath left me? Oh, my heart. Would fain leap after him. Revenge, I say. I'm mad to be revenged. My strumpet wife, it is thy quarrel that rips thus my flesh and makes my breast spit blood. <laughs> but thou shalt bleed, vanquished, got down, unable even to speak. Surely tis want of money makes men weak. Aye, twas that overthrew me. I'd ne'er been down else. Exit. Enter wife in a riding suit with a serving man. Faith, mistress, if it may not be presumption in me to tell you so, for his excuse you had a small reason, knowing his abuse. I grant I had, but alas, why should our faults at home be spread abroad? Tis grief enough within doors. At first sight, mine uncle could run o'er his prodigal life as perfectly as if his serious eye had numbered all his follies. 
knew of his mortgaged land, his friends in bonds, himself withered with debt, and in that minute had I added his usage and unkindness to have confounded every thought of good, where now fathering his riots on his youth, which time and tame experience will shake off, guessing his kindness to me as I smoothed him with all the skill I had, though his deserts are in form uglier than an unshaped bear, he's ready to prefer him to some office and place at court, a good and sure relief to all his stooping fortunes. T'will be a means I hope to make new league between us and redeem his virtues with his lands. I should think so, mistress. If he should not now be kind to you and love you and cherish you up, I should think the devil himself kept open house in him. I doubt not, but he will now. Prithee leave me. I think I hear him coming. I am gone. Exit. By this good means I shall preserve my lands and free my husband out of usurer's hands. Now there is no need of sale. My uncle's kind. I hope if aught this will content his mind. Here comes my husband. Enter husband. Now, are you come? Where's the money? Let's see the money. Is the rubbish sold? Those wise acres, your lands? Why then, the money, where is it? Pour it down, down with it, down with it, I say. Pour it on the ground. Let's see it, let's see it. Good sir, keep but in patience, and I hope my words shall like you well. I bring you better comfort than the sale of my dowry. Ha! <laughs> What's that? Pray do not fright me, sir, but vouchsafe me hearing. My uncle, glad of your kindness to me and mild usage, for so I made it to him. Hath in pity of your declining fortunes provided a place for you at court, of worth and credit, which so much overjoyed me. Out on the filth, over and overjoyed, when I'm in torment. <gasps> Spurns her. Thou politic whore, subtler than nine devils, was this thy journey to Nunk, to set down the history of me, my state and fortunes? Shall I, that dedicated myself to pleasure, be now confined in service to crouch and stand like an old man in the hams. My hat off, I that could never abide to uncover my head in the church. Base slut, this fruit bears thy complaints. Oh, heaven knows that my complaints were praises and best words of you in your estate. Only my friends knew of your mortgaged lands and were possessed of every accident before I came. If you suspect it but a plot in me to keep my dowry or for mine own good, O oh, my poor children's, though it suits a mother to show a natural care in their reliefs, yet I'll forget myself to calm your blood, consume it as your pleasure counsels you. And all I would, even clemency affords, give me but pleasant looks and modest words. Money, whore, money or all. Draws his dagger, enters a servant hastily. What the devil? How now? Thy hasty news. May it please you, sir. What? May I not look upon my dagger? Speak, villain, or I will execute the point on thee. Quick, short. Why, sir, a gentleman from the university stays below to speak with you. From the university? So, university. That long word runs through me. Exit. Was ever a wife so wretchedly beset? Had not this news stepped in between, the point had offered violence unto my breast. That which some women call great misery would show but little here would scarce be seen among my miseries. I may compare for wretched fortunes with all wives that are, nothing will please him until all be nothing. He calls it slavery to be preferred, a place of credit, a base servitude. What shall become of me and my poor children? Two here and one at nurse, my pretty beggars. I see how ruin with a palsy hand begins to shake the ancient seat to dust. The heavy weight of sorrow draws my lids over my dankish eyes. I can scarce see, thus grief will last, it wakes and sleeps with me. Enter the husband with the master of the college. Please you draw near, sir, you're exceeding welcome. That is my doubt, I fear I come not to be welcome. Yes, howsoever? Tis not my fashion, sir, to dwell in long circumstance, but to be plain and effectual, therefore, to the purpose. The cause of my setting forth was piteous and lamentable, that hopeful young gentleman, your brother, whose virtues we all love dearly, through your default and unnatural negligence, lies in a bond executed for your debt, a prisoner, all his studies amazed, his hopes struck dead, and the pride of his youth muffled in these dark clouds of oppression. Um, um. Oh, you have killed the torridest hope of all of our university, 
Wherefore, without repentance and amends, expect ponderous and sudden judgments to fall grievously upon you. Your brother, a man who profited in his divine employments, and might have made 10,000 souls fit for heaven. Now, by your careless courses, cast in prison, which you must answer for and assure your spirit, it will come home at length. O oh God. Wise men think ill of you, others speak ill of you. No man loves you, nay, even those who honesty condemns condemn you. And take this for the virtuous affection I bear your brother. Never look for prosperous hour, good thought, quiet sleeps, contented walks, nor anything that makes man perfect till you redeem him. What is your answer? How will you bestow him upon desperate misery or better hopes? I suffer till I hear your answer. Sir. You have much robbed of me. I feel you in my soul. You are your art's master. I never had sense till now. Your syllables have cleft me, both for your words and pains, I thank you. I cannot but acknowledge grievous wrongs done to my brother. Mighty, mighty, mighty wrongs. Within there. Enter a serving man. Fill me a bowl of wine. Alas, poor brother, bruised with an execution for my sake. A bruise, indeed, makes many a mortal sore, till the grave cure them. Enter with wine. Sir, I begin to you. Ye have chide your welcome. I could have wished it better for your sake. I pledge you, sir, to the kind man in prison. Let it be so. Now, sir, if you please to spend but a few minutes in walking about my grounds below, my man shall here attend you. I doubt not but by that time to be furnished of a sufficient answer, and therein my brother fully satisfied. Good, sir, in that the angels would be pleased, and the world's murmurs calmed, and I should say I set forth then upon a lucky day. Exit. O oh, thou confused man, thy pleasant sins have undone thee. Thy damnation has beggared thee. That heaven should say we must not sin, and yet made women. Gives our senses way to find pleasure, which, being found, confounds us. Why should we know those things so much misuse us? Oh, would virtue had been forbidden, we should then have proved all virtuous, for tis our blood to love what we are forbidden. Had not drunkenness been forbidden, what man would have been fool to a beast and zany to a swine, to show tricks in the mire? What is there in three dice? to make a man draw thrice three thousand acres into the compass of a little round table, and with the gentleman's palsy in the hand, shake out his posterity. Thieves or beggars, tis done. I dunt in faith, terrible, horrible misery. How well was I left? Very well, very well. My lands showed like a full moon about me. But now... The moon's in the last quarter, waning, waning. And I am mad to think that moon was mine, mine and my father's, and my forefathers, generations and generation. Down goes the house of us, down, down it sinks. Now is the name of a beggar, begs in me. That name which hundreds of years has made this shire famous, in me and my posterity runs out. In my seed, five are made miserable besides myself. My riot is now my brother's jailer, my wife sighing, my three boys' penury, and mine own confusion. He tears his hair. Why sit my hairs upon my cursed head? Will not this poison scatter them? Oh, my brothers, in execution among devils that stretch him and make him give. And I in want, not able for to live, nor to redeem him. Divines and dying men may talk of hell, but in my heart her several torments dwell. Slavery and misery. Who in this case would not take up money upon his soul? Pawn his salvation, live at interest. I that did ever in abundance dwell for me to want exceeds the throes of hell. Enter his little son, with a top and scourge. What ail you, father? Are you not well? 
I cannot scorch my top as long as you stand so. You take up all the room with your wide legs. Pah, you cannot make me afraid with this. I fear no wizards nor bugbears. He takes up the child by the skirts of his long coat in one hand and draws his dagger with the other. Up, sir, for here thou hast no inheritance left. Oh, what will you do, father? I am your white boy. Strikes him. Thou shalt be my red boy, take that! Oh, you hurt me, father. My eldest beggar, thou shalt not live to ask an user of bread, to cry at a great man's gate, or follow. Good, your honor, by a coach, no, nor your brother. Tis charity to bring you. How shall I learn now my head's broke? Stabs him. Bleed, bleed, rather than beg, beg. Be not thy name's disgrace. Spurn thou thy fortunes first, if they be base. Come view thy second brother. Fates, my children's blood shall spit into your faces. You shall see how confidently we scorn beggary. Exit with his son. Enter a maid with a child in her arms, the mother by her asleep. Sleep, sweet babe, sorrow makes thy mother sleep. It bodes small good when heaviness falls so deep. Hush, pretty boy, thy hopes might have been better. Tis lost at dice, what ancient honor won. Hard when the father plays away the son. Nothing but misery serves in his house. Ruin and desolation. Oh! Enter husband with boy bleeding. Whore, give me that boy! He strives with her for the child. Oh, help, help! Oh, alas, murder, murder! Are you gossiping, prating, sturdy queen? I'll break your clamor with your neck. Downstairs, tumble, tumble, headlong. He throws her down. So, the surest way to charm a woman's tongue is to break her neck. A politician did it. Mother, mother, I am killed, mother. His wife awakes and catches up the youngest. Ha, who's that cry? Oh, me, my children, both, 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 bloody, bloody. Strumpet, let go the boy, let go the beggar. Oh, my sweet husband. Filth, harlot. Oh, what will you do, dear husband? Give me the bastard. Your own sweet boy? There are too many beggars. Good, my husband. Dost thou prevent me still? Oh, God. Stabs at the child in her arms and gets it from her. Have at his heart. Oh, my dear boy. Brat, thou shalt not live to shame thy house. Oh, heaven. She is hurt and sinks down. And perish, now be gone. There's whores enough, and want would make thee one. Enter a lusty servant. Oh, sir, what deeds are these? Base slave, my vassal, comest thou between my fury to question me? Were you the devil, I would hold you, sir. Hold me? Presumption, I'll undo thee for it. Splud, you have undone us all, sir. Tug at thy master? Tug at a monster. Have I no power? Shall my slave fetter me? Nay, then the devil wrestles, I am thrown. Husband overcomes him. Oh, villain, now I'll tug thee, now I'll tear thee. Set quick spurs to my vassal, bruise him, trample him. Do, I think thou wilt not follow me in haste. My horse stands ready saddled, away, away. Now to my bratted nurse, my sucking beggar. Fates, I'll not leave you one to trample on. The master meets him. How it's with you, sir. Methinks you look a distracted color. <clears throat> Who? I, sir? <laughs> Tis but your fancy. Please, you walk in, sir, and I'll soon resolve you. I want one small part to make up the sum, and then my brother shall rest satisfied. I shall be glad to see it. Sir, I'll attend you. Exune. Oh, I am scarce able to heave up myself. He has so bruised me with his devilish weight and tore my flesh with his blood-hasty spur. A man before of easy constitution, till now hell's power supplied, to his soul's wrong. Oh, how damnation can make weak men strong. Enter master and two servants. Oh, the most piteous deed, sir, since you came. A deadly greeting hath he summed up these to satisfy his brother. Here's another, by the bleeding infants, the dead mother. Oh, oh. Surgeon, surgeon, she recovers life. One of his men all faint and bloodied. Follow, our murderous master has took horse to kill his child at nurse. Oh, follow quickly. I am the readiest. It shall be my charge to raise the town upon him. Exit master and servants. 
Good sir, follow him. Oh, my children. How is it with my most afflicted mistress? Why do I recover? Why half live? To see my children bleed before mine eyes? A sight able to kill a mother's breast without an executioner. What, art thou mingled too? I, thinking to prevent what his quick mischiefs had so soon acted, came and rushed upon him. We struggled, but a fouler strength than his, or through me with his arms. Then did he bruise me, and rent my flesh, and robbed me of my hair, like a man mad in execution, made me unfit to rise and follow him. What is it has beguiled him all grace, and stole away humanity from his breast, to slay his children, purpose to kill his wife, and spoil his servants? Enter two servants. Please, you leave this accursed place. A surgeon waits within. Willing to leave it, tis guilty of sweet blood, innocent blood. Murder hath took his chamber with full hands, and will not out as long as the house stands. Exeunt. Enter husband, as being thrown of his horse, and falls. O oh, stumbling jade, the spavin overtake thee, the fifty diseases stop thee. O, oh, I am sorely bruised, plague founder thee. Thou runst at ease and pleasure, hard of chance, to throw me now within a flight of the town, in such plain, even ground? Foot, a man may dice upon it and throw away the meadows. Ah, filthy beast. Cry within. Follow. 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 Ha, I hear the sounds of men, like hue and cry. Up, up, and struggle to thy horse. Make on, dispatch that little beggar, and all's done. Cry within. Here. This, this way. way. This way. At my back? Oh, what fate have I? My limbs deny me to go, my will is barred. Beggary claims a part. Oh, could I here reach to the infant's heart? Enter master of the college, three gentlemen, and others with holberds. Here, here! Yonder! Yonder! A natural flinty more than barbarous, the Scythians and their marble-hearted fates could not have acted more remorseless deeds in their relentless nature than these of thine. Was this the answer I long waited on, the satisfaction for thy prison brother? He can have no more of us than our skins, and some of them want but fleeing. Great sins have made him impudent, has shed so much blood that he cannot blush. Away with him. Bear him to the justices. A gentleman of worship dwells at hand. There shall his deeds be blazed. Why, all the better. My glory tis to have my action known. I grieve for nothing, but I missed of one. There's little of a father in that grief. Bear him away. Exeunt. Enter a knight with two or three gentlemen. Endangered so his wife, murdered his children? So the cry goes. I am sorry I e'er knew him, that ever he took life and natural being from such an honored stock, in fair descent till this black minute without stain or blemish. Here come the men. Enter the master of the college, and the rest with the prisoner. The serpent of his house, I'm sorry for this time, that I am in place of justice. Please you, sir. Do not repeat it twice, I know too much. Would it had near been thought on, sir, I bleed for you. Your father's sorrows are alive in me. What made you show such monstrous cruelty? In a word, sir, I have consumed all, played away long acre, and I thought of the charitablest deed I could do, to cousin beggary, and knock my house on the head. I do not think but in tomorrow's judgment the terror will fit closer to your soul. When the dread thought of death remembers you to further which, take this sad voice for me. Never was act played more unnaturally. I thank you, sir. Go, lead him to jail, where justice claims all. There must pity fail. Come, come, away with me. Exit prisoner. Sir, you deserve the worship of your place. What all did so, in you the law is grace. It is my wish it should be so, ruinous man, the desolation of his house, the blot upon his predecessor's honored name. That man is near as shame that's past shame. Exit. Enter husband with the officers, the master and gentleman, as going by his house. I am right against my house, seat of my ancestors. I hear my wife's alive, but much endangered. Let me entreat to speak with her before the prison grip me. Enter his wife, brought in a chair. See here, she comes of herself. Oh, my sweet husband, my dear distressed husband, now in the hands of unrelenting laws, my greatest sorrow, my extremest bleeding, now my soul bleeds. How now, kind to me? Did not I wound thee, leave thee for dead? Tut, 
Far greater wounds did my breast feel. Unkindness strikes a deeper wound than steel. You have been still unkind to me. Faith, and so I think I have. I did my murders roughly out of hand, desperate and sudden. But thou hast devised a fine way now to kill me. Thou hast given mine eyes seven wounds apiece. Now glides the devil from me, departs at every joint, heaves up my nails. Oh, catch him, new torments, that were here invented. Bind him one thousand more, you blessed angels. In that bottomless pit, let him not rise to make men act unnatural tragedies, to spread into a father and in fury make him his children's executioners, murder his wife, his servants, and who not? For that man's dark where heaven is quite forgot. Oh, my repentant husband. My dear soul, whom I too much have wronged, for death I die, and for this have I longed. Thou shouldst not be assured for these faults, die, if the law could forgive as soon as I. Children laid out. What sight is yonder? Oh, our two bleeding boys laid forth upon the threshold. Here's weight enough to make a heart string crack. Were it lawful that your pretty souls might look from heaven into your father's eyes, then should you see the penitent glasses melt and both your murders shoot upon my cheeks. But you are playing in angels' laps, and will not look upon me. Who, void of grace, killed you in beggary? Oh, that I might my wishes now attain, I should then wish you living were again. Though I did beg with you, which thing I feared, oh, t'was the enemy my eyes so bleared. Oh, would you could pray heaven me to forgive, that will, unto my end, repentant live. It makes me even forget all other sorrows, and leave part with this. Come, will you go? I'll kiss the blood I spilt, and then I'll go. My soul is bloody. Well may my lips be so. Farewell, dear wife. Now thou and I must part. I of thy wrongs, repent me with my heart. Oh, stay. Thou shalt not go. That's but in vain. You see, it must be so. Farewell, ye bloody ashes of my boys. My punishments are their eternal joys. Let every father look into my deeds, and then their heirs may prosper while mine bleeds. Exeunt husband with officers. More wretched am I now in this distress than former sorrows made me. O oh, kind wife, be comforted. One joy is yet unmurdered. You have a boy at nurse. Your joy's in him. Dearer than all is my poor husband's life. Heaven give my body strength, which yet is feigned with much expense of blood, and I will kneel, sue for his life, number up all my friends, to plead for pardon for my dear husband's life. Was it in man to wound so kind a creature? I'll ever praise a woman for thy sake. I must return with grief, my answer's set. I shall bring news, weighs heavier than the debt. Two brothers, one in bond, lies overthrown, this on a deadlier execution. Finis. End of a Yorkshire tragedy.